Hey folks, hope everybody's doing well out there. We're going to be talking about the Rossi R92 and 357 Magnum today, and I'll be sharing my impressions and thoughts a few months into owning this cool lever gun. The Rossi 92 is a Brazilian copy of the classic Winchester 1892, designed by John Browning. Hitting the specs, this is the blued 16-inch barrel model. It is offered in a 20-inch and 24-inch barrel, and all barrel lengths are also available in stainless steel. It weighs in at just over 5.5 pounds and has an overall length of 33.7 inches. The wood is listed as Brazilian hardwood. The sights are semi-buckhorn with an adjustable rear and a drift adjustable front. Capacity is 8 in the tube, 1 in the chamber with 357 Magnum. It does have a manual safety on top of the bolt, which is not a feature found on Winchester 92s. I purchased this R92 a few months back after becoming interested in the lever action pistol caliber carbine as a general purpose utility rifle. Part of that interest came from the fact that I think lever actions are extremely cool. I probably watched too many westerns in my younger years. Another part of that came from the fact that I love revolvers and am pretty invested in the 357 and 38 calibers both from a stocking standpoint and a reloading standpoint. The idea of having a lightweight, easy handling long gun that could eat both of these calibers with a noticeable increase in both ballistic performance from the longer barrel and shooting performance is very appealing to me. As many of you know, I live in a band state where semi-automatic rifles are fairly difficult to get. I have owned my fair share, but the climate in my area regarding firearms won't get any more relaxed over the coming years. I also think optics matter, and for whatever reason, wood-stocked lever and bolt guns don't seem as scary to the folks around here. Yeah, it's silly, but there's something to be said for not freaking out your neighbors as you walk your property with your AR and chest rig, at least for my lifestyle and location. Now you may be asking yourself, why did he end up with a Rossi over a Marlin, Henry, or Japanese Winchester? I went with the Rossi partly because I think the 92 action is cool and love John Browning's designs, partly because it was significantly more affordable than the other options, and because I wanted it specifically as a working gun that I would shoot a lot and carry outdoors a lot, and didn't want something that I would feel like I have to baby. I'd heard good things about the durability and reliability of the 92 action, and also many positive things from people I trust about the general quality of the Rossi, at least as a working gun and shooter. It's definitely not going to win any beauty contests, and some of the metal to wood finish is pretty sloppy and poorly fitted. The action was okay, but not great when I first got it. And the loading gate was hard to use with sharp edges that were really tearing up my fingers when loading. There are many resources on the web in terms of smoothing out the Rossi action, and at some point I will get in there and do a polishing and tuning, but both the action and the loading gate have improved a lot just with use. Running rounds through it and manipulating the action a lot have contributed to this, and I have a feeling that with more use and some minor polishing and smoothing, this carbon will be pretty slick. I've got about 200 rounds through the 92 at this point, mainly 357 Magnums. My range trips have just been consisting of getting used to the rifle and confirming function with different types of ammo, and making sure I'm on paper. The semi-buckhorn sights really aren't all that great. If you were just looking for something to plink at cans at a fairly close range, or use it for cowboy action shooting, they would be totally fine, but for a user rifle, I'd like a little more functionality at 50 to 100 yards. My eyesight is not great. I wear corrective lenses and I have a hard time with this style of sight, at least the way these are set up. I've been looking into various other sight options. Peep sights or ghost rings generally work well for me, as do red dots, so we'll see what I end up doing there. I'm going to withhold going too deep on the accuracy potential of the R92 until I can get some better sights on it, but I'm getting hand-sized groups at 50 yards for now. The 92 had no problems with the various brands of 158 and 125 grain 357 jacketed soft point and jacketed hollow points that I had around. I think moving forward I'll be using the 158 grain Federal American Eagle jacketed soft point as the go-to load for this just because I have a lot on hand and I like the ballistics out of a 16 inch barrel. A box of 158 grain 38 special flat points I had fed flawlessly through it as well. I have yet to shoot any cast bullets through it, but once I get the sights figured out, I will start seeing what it can do with some of my hand-loaded semi-wad cutters and 357 and 38. It's a really fun gun to shoot. With 38s, recoil is pretty minimal and would be a great step up from 22LR for a new shooter. 
With 357s, the recoil is there a little bit more, but it's still fairly easy to handle. I'm planning on shooting this rifle a little more before I start doing anything to it, but I'm definitely planning on doing some type of action work and replacing the plastic magazine follower with a metal one, just for the sake of durability. With some better sights, a way to carry some extra ammo on the gun, and maybe a sling, once I can prove its reliability, I think it will be a really handy tool to have around the house. Thanks for watching, folks. Stay tuned for more content on the Rossi 92. Take care.